And that's 16-Bit Rock announcing that we're doing another episode of our podcast you known smell. as Wrestle Boys. You smell. You smell. All right. Ah, oh, jeez. We had a week off. A lot of things happened. We're currently in a shitstorm, so I thought, fuck it, we should probably just watch some wrestling and just ignore what's going on in real life. Yeah, you know, let's have some, let's get some escapism listen like to, wrestling should be. Listen to 16-bit rock music, fucking, not, all that not shit. 16-bit <laughs> rock and roll music, but 16-bit The Rock's theme. Yes. Literally rock music. Welcome to Wrestle Boys, the only show where you are pretty much having a two out of three chance of having autism if you're on here. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm I'm Ali, the guy who records but is mostly a co-host. I'm Megafighter, the actual co-host. And the guy who takes more notes than I do because I get pissed off and then stop writing notes. And, and I am Rock Who pisses me off to no end, but I still invite him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we still allow him on here, but hey, we won't hold that against him. <laughs> it's, not, it's not his fault. I'm terrible. Yeah. So, uh, we had a little bit of a scheduling conflict when it came to, like, Raw and SmackDown. Like we said before, we pretty much had to do just a SmackDown and then a pay-per-view. Yes. And the pay-per-views are huge, so I think from now on we're going to do the pay-per-views separately from the sh- from Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, we're finally getting to what, <laughs> what we were planning on doing before, and we didn't do because the Raw before was a recap episode for, 20, for 2001. Yeah, which is weird because this is going to be episode four, week four, but it's more like week three, but... Yeah, who gives, who gives a shit? Ah, who cares? Oh, the music's just going to end. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just fading now. So we... we did you- we did used to justify it by saying, hey, we have eight hours of recording time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know anyway, how we start time off we got with um, an MLK memorial. And is it, we is got it, really. Is it MLK Day at this point, or. Um, I don't know the significance of that day because I'm white and stupid. Well, I mean, it's January 21st, MLK Day, or is it close? It might be MLK Day. It wasn't Black yes. History Month yet, because that's February. Yes. yes. I have and, uh, immediately well, something, on um, Monday, January 18th, I just looked. Yeah. Okay, so so we aren't... Well, yeah, so January 18th is the fixed day for Martin Luther King Day, so this was, like, three days after. Yeah, like, they, they try and, like, schedule their, like, their memorable... They, they try to Holiday schedule it event. around... Um, it looks like it's observed, uh, I'm looking it up, they observe the day every third Monday of January. Oh, okay, oh. that makes sense. Okay, that, that, yeah, that works. So yeah, this would have absolutely been. The benefits of having a Royal Rumble is a slightly updated Raw intro. <laughs> yes. Same music, just new stuff in it. Except for the fact that for some reason they kept putting like Windows Movie Maker transitions in. There was in. a weird spiral video effect that like... Everyone saw it, and we were all like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> oh, also, you missed the you missed the in- you missed the uh, animation of like the the raw package splitting open. Oh man! In like a uh, shitty three uh, D effect. Wasn't this the same intro package they did for the Rumble, though? Not no, not the intro package for the Rumble. Like, right, the, like the, no, the, the, the raw, raw intro. intro. You know. The raw intro. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the, ru- the, <laughs> the Royal Rumble package they did to start the show. Oh, they it, played that at the beginning of the Rumble, too. Yeah. It was yeah, the same that's one. What I, yeah, and I just, like... Oh, so we're, we're not there yet? What? Uh, no, we're past the Rumble. They were just we're trying to... We're past the Rumble. The, no, I mean, I mean, are we there, there? Are we past that point of the show where they talk, where they show it? That's that was the very intro. Instead of the recap, oh, they had the Rumble right, promo right, right. package because right. And I just, back in two thousand two, uh, my thought was immediately. My thought immediately was like, I know the Royal Rumble happened, but why did they have to show the same exact? I, I, I was trying to explain, but because it's two thousand two when on demand service was a thing, and internet on demand service wasn't, they really wanted you to buy replays of the show because they would like discount the price slightly and see if you can buy the pay per view. 
Because you can pay, you can watch it live or you can watch it like the recorded version of it. So they wanted you to go back and watch the Rumble. That's why okay. all the recaps were in weird slideshow footage. Yes, yeah. we'll get well, to that. Yeah, that's before. something I like. I remember when we when we watched um, after a pay per view raw after pay per views before, where they would they would show like an aftermath. They would actually show the Rumble, but it would be in like yeah, as, essentially still shots. They wouldn't show video footage. I'm yeah. just surprised they didn't do that here. Oh no, they did. I, I swear they did. I, I swear they there did. was a point where we did the slideshow for the 2002 Rumble. But uh, yeah, we uh, we get weird. I think it was like we got the pyro, and then suddenly there's this weird spiral effect going on. I missed where, that. like like when like the fucking like cutting from the stage to like the commentary table. Hmm. Uh, Lillian Garcia now on ring announcing, and I think this might yes. be the first episode from TNN, unless I'm mistaken on that. Um, I don't know. They were kind of advertising the TNN thing, but I don't know if they cut out the advertisements of switching to TNN or not. Also, um, the little post thing. I fixed my mic. Now you don't have to hear my computer. And we get a, and we... And and our announcement of the show being from Greenville, South Carolina, at the Bilo Center. Weird we had this name. problem where, like, they said Greenlo, they said like uh, Greenville, and then we found out there's a Greenville in both Carolinas. Yes, I had to go. Okay. I had to go to the pro wrestling that. wiki to check. And it yeah, was South Carolina. <laughs> We're in South Carolina. Uh, and, we saw... we get, and we get an announcement of our tag match that is Kurt Angle and Jericho uh, against. Rock and Triple H. Yes. And I just, I know I ended up watching SmackDown for, uh, first before I watched Raw, but I just have to note that the main event of this show is essentially repeated on SmackDown minus a few participants. Yeah. Yeah. Few welcome to like, switched. welcome to like WWE booking like pre fucking pre brand split. Because it sucks. <laughs> Did I say bland split? Ah, uh, yes, the it, bland split. It's been a problem for years. It's still a problem. They just run. They they have the 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 same matches over and over and over. It's like, like it'll still and then, be back in that and back then we split, were but at younger. least it'll be like different dudes each week or each show. Back then we were like we were young and stupid and probably were like just craving for. This shit in, uh, for exciting. We didn't shit have the anyway. network, so we couldn't like binge this shit. So it did. Well, yeah, and it's well, also it's also a bit different when it's like three days apart. Well, if I have to be, hours. if I have to be personal about it, um, I didn't have UPN as a kid, so you only had like one show. I only watched Raw, and like sometimes it would like play a recap from SmackDown about what happened, but it always felt like. I, I could never access SmackDown, and I always felt really left out about it. <laughs> Even though, okay. apparently, back in, like, early 2002, all I was missing was, like, a slightly different ta main event Version tag match. Raw. A slightly different main event. <laughs> yes. So, I'm doing a little quick research. It could also be the fact that, you know, in later years, um, I'm trying to remember when... Like around the years, like we did a C, we started the C show, like 2013 ish, uh, 2012, 2013 ish. Yeah, it was, oh, it was before that, honestly. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't, I didn't join the show until later, but I remember doing the show before 2012. It was like, well, it, it had to be sometime around 2011 because that was also when Dark Match started. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just doing a little research and math here to try and count. How many pay per views we had in 2002 compared to then? Actually, we saw a uh, a play of, like a video of like the best pay per views from 2002 from worst to best, and I believe this year has 14. Okay, Yay. and how the question would be how many pay per views were in 2012? More. I think that's more. Man, they started yeah, fucking that's... going overboard on pay per view. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much started having pay per views like every month. Yeah, 
Well, it's one, always two, been every three. month, but sometimes they would do two in a month, and it's like, there's no build. What do you want us to do? <laughs> okay, um, 12. I'm, um, I'm looking at OSW, and they only have 12. Like 12 dub 10, 2012 pay per views or 12 pay per views on in 2012. Huh. That's interesting. Unless I'm looking at this wrong. Maybe, maybe it's just the whatever. I, I know at one point that, yeah, they were doing a pay per view pretty much every month. So, yeah. So here's the thing Lillian Garcia is the ring announcer. I think they switched from, uh, the other they one. Switched they, off Fink they switched off, they switched off Big Fink because Tony Chimmel's the raw announcer. Anyway, because this is Ra SmackDown or Raw, Raw. This is Raw. So Tony Jones is the SmackDown announcer. Got it. Because of because this is Raw, we have to have some variation of Taz and Spike versus the Dudleys. And this uh, week, we now add in Rob Van Dam and Booker T, who have feels nothing to do. Who have nothing to do with anything in this feud. I think I because re like Booker the closest eliminated thing RVD is or RVD. Or was in fucking ECW and Booker T is just not doing anything this week. He had a, he had they got an open schedule. I realized two problems already when the before this match started. It I didn't uh, notice that um Spike was wearing the neck brace to sell the beatdown he got last week. Yeah, he'd, he'd been he'd been wearing that since like the Rumble. I think. Yeah, I still say that that's the dumbest thing because it's like you because <laughs> again I have to reiterate. A foam pad isn't going to protect you from a neck injury. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's still wearing it. <laughs> okay, I see. Where he... yeah. But yeah, it looks like, but yeah, Booker T is so, apparently a heel at that point, which is fine. Well, he 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 was a heel like at the start of the year. Okay. Except he worked but, for McMahon, and now he doesn't. But and he problem, still does this Benny Rooney. Spinny but Rooney. a problem, yeah, a, 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 and. They haven't changed his music. Also, yeah, his music is way too, like, face-ish. No, no, he and always it, had that theme. And I also thought Not about always. It, and I also thought about this. I say, as for the Dudleys, Stacey Keebler just doesn't seem to me to give off that evil smug bitch vibe. Well, it, it's would... this weird thing where, like, Stacey, Stacey is, like, vaguely face-ish. Or at least you have to listen to. If you're a it's if you're huge. a woman with, but if you're a woman with butt cheeks, you're a face. And <laughs> okay, at least at least well, with Jerry Lawler, well, or at least with is, Jerry Lawler, because he wouldn't shut the fuck up about her all she day. She doesn't seem to be actually trying to uh, seem like she. By the way, the by the way, by the way, we fucking missed the Lawler thirst count last week. <laughs> I was about to say, we, we fucked up and missed the Lawler first count for last episode, oh, yes. which was like I'm pulling 13. that fucking up. I'm going to make sure we have the Lawler first count for last week as well. We we yeah. owe this to our 16 fans. We have 16 fans. We have uh, 16 people who actually bother to watch us. I guess so. not fans, but people who fucking come back, I guess. You, you <laughs> somehow have, you somehow care. You somehow. <laughs> Sorry, that just that bugged me because it was something I noticed right after we finished recording. Oh yeah, and it was like it was well, it was a point of debate between you and I because of the whole Queen joke thing. But yeah, it was like I think I had mine listed as thirteen, and mine was twelve. Yeah, so we'll say that it will say it was twelve, twelve point five. <laughs> and this week we don't so we don't forget we don't it, round it, fractions it, around it here. It was thirteen. It was 13 this week. It's so it's Taz for a match that <laughs> for Not a yet. match that had no Not stakes yet. whatsoever for RVD and Booker T. They went all fucking out. They went all fucking well, out. I and the crowd like seemed to not give a shit. <laughs> I do like that we're seeing fallout from the rumble. Not give cause... a shit in a good way. They were just cheering for everything. You couldn't piss them off if you fucking just lifted your leg and peed on someone. Well, uh, the, well, we have wrestlers that are feuding with the guy that eliminate him. It's like a storyline I don't often think of or remember when it comes to the Rumble. And I kind of like I like that idea of, hey, you prevented me from getting in the main event of Mania and having a chance at the championship, so fuck you! Yeah, that's fair. 
I just feel like maybe Rhino would have been a better fit if we wanted to make this a big ECW thing. Anyway, is, this match you think is... that's where we're going? Like, well, I'm just saying, like, this match is mostly ECW guys. I would have oh, yeah. Booker true. T for Rhino. Anyway, this match is pretty good. I yeah. believe the finish was they hit the 3D on Taz. But at the same hits a five star frog And then RVD hits a five star frog smash onto Bubba. And then, like, Spike gets up and just grabs his legs and holds them down so he can't kick out from outside and, the uh, ring. I have to note that JR says, he came from out of nowhere. He's like, no, he didn't. No, we see him. We see where he came yeah. from. Trust we me, we know. He didn't he notice him the first time. He didn't. I wanted to know that there was, uh, early on this match, we had, um, Devon gave a really good right hand where he knocked, uh, where T- well, I mean, Taz gave Devon a really good right hand and knocked him off the ring, and then Devon came back in a little bit, just in a in a, a little bit, and then gives him an impressive spinning elbow, something I did not think he could do. Also, Taz is just his suplexes are so violent. I love God it. Damn, no one. <laughs> it's it's not a surprise to me that this is like the year where I think he finally shut down and went to commentary, because and- yeah, the shit he's doing to his neck. Speaking of what we, we we you guys mentioned the spinner Rooney, I like I found it weird. I know he's a heel, but why is the crowd booing the chance that he's going to do it? That's a crowd because I think it's a showboating thing. Like they want it to be like, oh, he's he's fucking rubbing it in the guy he's beating's face, but he did that as a face too. <laughs> That's just a I Booker T thing. Booker T I do like the, wants I do to style like on you. The, hit the spinner Rooney after a spinebuster or something. Yeah, I do like or, or that, like thinks- weird running kick he does, where like he lifts his leg up and hits you with the side of his leg. Yeah, yeah, I like he, that kick. He always does do that think- kick, and it's like, oh, that's the Booker T kick. Yeah, I do like that he thinks about it before deciding it's probably a better idea to tag in Devon. <laughs> I'm going ah fuck it, <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm like, and, and I says, and then I hear a Booker sucks, and I'm like, wow. He must have done something pretty bad. I wish I knew why. Sided with Vince McMahon for, uh, like, a cup of coffee. (laughs) I was with Vince McMahon, and then he got bored, and I just sort of went and did my own thing. I I teamed with Angle for a bit. I uh, (laughs) I don't know. Booker Booker gave a really good spine buster. He spiked Spike Dudley. Sorry, Uh, I had uh, to do it. Booker (laughs) Booker T's good. Like, I, he was good. legitimately a contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. He has everything Vince wants. Tall, muscular, fast. The uh, only downside to him is his pigmentation. Jesus Christ. Uh, God that's damn more, it, that's Mega me fire. thinking like Vince right here. Because think of how long it took. Yeah. Just, I would have fucking put a rocket ship under his ass. Have him just, like, in the main title contention. You don't have to, like, reign of terror Booker T, but I want him to at least get the title a couple times off of, like... Yeah. Whoever has it currently. Speaking of black people, the only the uh, the only white guy on the opposite team actually got pinned. We we made we we joked about this and we were gonna keep a counter on it. Yeah, we but... were we were doing it. We were gonna do a counter gag of like every time a black guy jobs out during like the MOK Martin memorial. Luther, yeah, but they but didn't not, do it. it. They didn't do it. So props. <laughs> So props. It's a lot better than how they were doing, you know, in modern day, where Kofi Kingston take is taking a curb stomp from Seth Rollins on from Black Rollins. History Month. On Black History Month. That was oh like, wow, I don't remember this. <laughs> I it was either I don't know if they were in the New Day. I thought I it was Biggie. Was just, no, it, it was it was Biggie. early New Day when they weren't faces. Yeah, like it was Shield. Were still a thing. Yes. New Day was not yet faces? New, New Day was like the... They were doing the whole, like, we're obnoxiously positive, please boo us thing. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. At some point... That's at pretty some much point, how they started. Kofi or Big E takes a curb stomp from Seth Rollins during Black History Month, and it's just like, wow. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> did they acknowledge, were they acknowledging at the time that it was Black History yes. Month when they did it? They, 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 did, that, they did the montage of just like celebrating Black History. I just wanted to make sure they were. Wrestlers. <laughs> and then it's just like Kofi takes a curb stomp. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> just, just that's, a, that's a big one on the Yikes copter. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I, had, I, just, I just had to make sure they were well, they were still. Well, out the red carpet. That's a yikes. On the. <laughs> And uh, also a point that I forgot to mention at the start of the match, when talk- start of the talk of the match was um, RVD has one of a kind back. Oh yeah, they just fucked up and didn't give him the right theme song for the Rumble. Pretty and then much. it's just okay, so now they just yeah, so it's just okay. He does have one of a kind. We either weren't sure. Or, either either that or or our or we have the earlier theory of maybe they they edited this in for the show for the network. No, no, we actually, we, we, I, I was the one who proposed that, but Ali pointed out, yeah, you can hear the crowd echo or like the echo effect on the, um, okay. on the song. Yeah. It's, it's being played over the crowd mics. Okay. Crowd so, speaker. um, you know, cut to commercial come back and Jericho shows up wearing plaid pants and a playboy bunny shirt. <laughs> it, it, they were the checkerboard pants. Excuse yeah, me. They were the I checkerboard didn't... pants. The Scott. So Scott Jericho is the a running character. Scott Jericho. <laughs> yeah. Pick it up. Pick it up. Hey, I hey. did not notice his not uh, this outfit at all. It, that in his outfit at all. So <laughs> Ali first immediately noticed the, the checkerboard pants. That I get. Yeah, so he so he played so he wood. played a bunch of ska while this promo was going on. I have to play ska every time Jericho wears checkered pants. <laughs> yes, but then like midway through, he realizes are those Playboy Bunny logos on his jacket? Yes, and it was like so weird. Otherwise, this was a pretty good promo. It was pretty much a oh. promo of like, bet you thought I lost the belt. Fuck all of you. <laughs> um, as Jericho was coming down. I was no, I, I, I was. He demands to be reason, taken I just, seriously. I just happened to point out. I had just happened to notice how much he was kissing the belt, and a thought came to my head: if he What if Jericho kissed the belt so much that it gave him painfully chapped lips? <laughs> yeah, but I get, just had the mental get, image of just get, Jericho <laughs> making out, like cradling and making out with a belt. Like, at least it wasn't the hardcore <laughs> belt. Then he'd get tetanus. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I got locked jaw, baby. <laughs> no. Now, one thing I, I thought about odd about this uh, the start of this pro uh, that well, it wasn't the start, but wait, was there about, a? Uh, I think there was a rock segment. What? Uh, wait, no, it wasn't things. the rock there, segment. Actually, I'm sorry. a couple odd things. Overall, about Jericho this did a gimmick where he pretended to do a phone call to a guy named Frank. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, yeah. Frank, you want to watch The Rock beat up Chris Jericho? Oh, I love watching Chris Jericho get beat up. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. But uh, I forgot about that. We little, did make fun of that, yeah. There was a little odd part where when he was talking about when he was saying, you know, you all expected, you all expected The Rock to win, and then he said. The Rock three times before he said a lot. The Rock. He he lost. The, rock the Rock. The Rock. The Rock is on fire. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, bam, time to play the game. And yeah, Triple, Triple H, H comes, comes out. out. He's applauding, but he's holding the microphone, so he's just kind of slapping the microphone. <laughs> so it's just, <laughs> it's something you know, just like. <laughs> it's like I don't know. If, I don't Hunter, know. If my, I don't know. If me. Hunter, please. <laughs> I don't know if me clapping my own mic created the same effect or not. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, Triple H is like, oh, hey, you won the belt, but I really doubt that you'll make it to WrestleMania with that fucking belt. Whoever I'm facing at WrestleMania is probably not going to be you. And also, we saw a giant sign come up in the background that says, I will wrestle nude for food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I, I saw that. Our sign of the week. <laughs> as I put down, because really nothing else was beating that. <laughs> and there were some triers. But... Anyway, it's sort of the raw opening angle, and I hate using like the very generic term of like, you know how like a guy will talk, and then someone will come out, and then that guy will talk, and then someone else will come out, and that guy will talk? That, that's yeah. basically what we got here. Is tri- Chris Jericho talks, uh, Triple H talks, Kurt Angle talks. Kurt Angle comes out and talks, and he goes like, you know, I he was talking about something that happened during the Rumble to Kurt yeah, Angle. Yeah, well, Triple, H, Triple, Triple H, H was, was doing and, we, and then doing we, like his victory pose where he rips his balls off. Can we stop for a second and go back to the uh, um to what Triple H was saying because he he did a thing that bugged me a little bit where he he said 
I, I, he said, I beat 29 other men in the Rumble, and I'm going, why would the baby face say that? It's fine for the heel to do it. I, well, I mean, uh, that's well, also... Still, I was uh, going to uh, say, that's, number that's one, problem, Triple H isn't a good face. And number two... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And number two, you still technically beat 29 other people when you're in the Rumble and get number and get yeah, the final position. I guess, but yeah, I guess technically, I... technically, you don't even really beat the twenty nine other men. You beat like the amount of men you actually eliminated. Right, right. And if I that's... recall, Triple H eliminated like a couple people. We we yeah. said the statistic I, last week. I, I I guess I just would really like it if someone acknowledged that the luck of the draw is involved. Yeah, exactly. I think <laughs> Triple H got like twenties. He was in the twenties. Yeah. He was somewhere in the twenties, but the I beat twenty nine other men. It's like you you didn't beat all of them. <laughs> yeah. Man. It, it, yeah, the it's that's something the heel would say. Well, so the, after uh, Angle talks and claims that Triple H was doing that weird yeah thing where he rips his balls off in the camera cut so you didn't see it. Yeah, that's the thing. It was I think it was supposed to cut to Angle making fun of Triple H, but it didn't. Yeah. So we didn't see it, and I'm like, what the fuck, done? So The Rock comes out, and they all fight in the ring, and it's like, oh, convenient. This is the main event later. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah, that's where it's even worse, where it's doing the people talking, and then it leads into, like, the fight. Isn't this the tag team that's happening later? And they're not doing the thing where, like, an authority figure comes out and goes, hey, guys, if you want to settle something, how about we do a fucking tag match? Right. No, it's just they were booked for the tag match and just had this brawl because it's like, oh, shit, they're going to be a tag match later. Uh, yeah, um, I'm, I, I was thinking about how often when there's a tag match planned later in the show, they usually a lot of times don't immediately announce it. Hell, they don't even always have to, especially with the beat down by Angle and Jericho. The Rock comes in and that, that can become the reason for the tag match. Yeah. And the only problem is, as you mentioned, that despite being in control of WWE, Vince and Rick aren't really making the matches. They're not so making decisions. The... So if that's the case, then who the hell is? Like, Rick <laughs> Flair's the... just cutting weird promos. Yeah, Rick Flair's just cutting weird promos, and Vince McMahon's in an art house film, so I just don't know who's... <laughs> <laughs> I want to mention one thing before we leave the beatdown segment that I really thought was cool, even if it probably wasn't planned. Triple H goes to, like, he kicks Angle in the gut to set him up for the pedigree. And Angle's wearing, like, a hooded, like, sweatshirt. Oh, so yeah, and his, and his hoodie flips over, up. His hood flips up over his face, and I thought, that's that's awesome. Oh, that if, I rem wasn't... if I remember, uh, is this the promo where he does it, or is it the, the SmackDown? Because I, I remember him saying to Triple H, is like, and you did that w weird thing you do. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what we said. About. Aren't you listening? <laughs> that's what we were talking about with the rip his balls off motion. Because like he, oh, he does that thing okay. where he like you know he lifts both his arms up and he goes. Nyeh. I actually, oh, I actually did that. You, I didn't know that's what you were referencing. Yeah, yeah, that's what we were referencing. And the camera didn't cut to Angle doing it. It just stayed on Triple H's face. And then cut and like Angle's arms were still up, but like. That was clearly supposed to be a visual gag, and they just fucking missed it. <laughs> you fucking done. Come on, man. So, commercial. We come back and immediately have a seizure, because Edge is coming out. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. And here's time. the thing that I noticed, but I don't know if anyone else noticed. Edge has this weird fluid on his face, and I couldn't figure out what it was. <laughs> like, the I, side I, of his face had this, like, weird goop on it. <laughs> I did I, not see that. I didn't see it, but I couldn't see anything. Thanks, Edge. <laughs> I mean, well, why Durango? Thanks to, thanks to whoever does the lighting in his fucking entrance. I, I don't God. know if he just put the baby oil on his face, and if anyone can tell him you don't have to do that part. I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but he put some ass cream on his face. <laughs> Get some ass cream on there. He got it from Christian, though Christian will deny having supplied it. So, this match is sponsored by The Truth and yes. Slackers. <laughs> slackers. We we had to look that up. Because we looked up Slackers, and it t apparently is some kind of, like, college comedy movie, and it got, like, a 10% oh on Rotten God, Tomatoes. Oh, my God, I'd forgotten about that. 
it, it's Wait, about like a college. It's about like a nerdy college guy blackmailing a bunch of jocks because he knew he knew they cheated on the test. I think I remember a movie called this, but don't, didn't remember what the hell. It anyway, was about. it's dog shit. <laughs> and this was back when the truth was about weed and not just like smoking cigarettes. Oh, <laughs> like oh, don't do a weed. Yeah. The, that so ain't well been around, but now. And by the way, about... this is the, just the fastest drop of a fucking title rematch I've ever seen. Because right. we're rematching Indeed. the day after the Rumble. Edge wants his title back, and he's facing William Regal for the Intercontinental I was Championship. Almost expecting him to get it back on this episode. It seemed like that kind of booking. <laughs> fucking hot potato booking. Yeah. yeah, they've done it before, and they've done it later, so it's not that unusual. It's a no. This is a good match, but at the same time, we saw this match at the Rumble. It was. Let it, it wasn't breathe. that good. It was very short. Uh, yes. All I have as notes is uh, Jerry Lawler really likes William Regal's hair, <laughs> and describes have... Edge as having a rat nest for hair. <laughs> oh yeah, he. I actually like that where he where like Jerry Lawler during when he was talking about Regal's hair, he said he complimented the camera work. But that just reminded me of how, like, the thing I've been liking about the commentary in this year is it feels like a natural sports broadcast com style commentary of you got, like, a play-by-play -play man, you got a guy telling jokes. Well, now they and, have you know, three people, and, like, two of them are trying to get, like, catchphrases and, and catchphrases and, and other shit over, and, like, one guy's kind of calling the match, but not really... <laughs> And someone's always plugging something. And it someone's trying to like... plug something, or they're trying to use, like, the five or six taglines for each wrestler of, like, you know, the man, the big dog, getting his yard. It, it's all about, it's all about, you have to, you have to mention the brand. It's you have to mention word this. and it's worse. It, it is, to... it is just, like, this constant parade of just trying to brand everything that they're saying. Yep. You know, get these hands. Oh, the monster among men. Like, it just it never just ends. talk, but please talk. Like this feels like just two guys. I talking don't need you to like, shoot from the hip. Talking. Just make observations. <laughs> make observations, which is what we see with Jerry Lawler, where he's at his best because he's he's making observations. Like Despite William Regal's got really nice hair. Local pervert, but he's also it, making it, it's observations. fine if you call someone by their nickname as long as it feels like you're saying it in the game the game the game the game the na yeah. naturally yeah. You know? yeah uh oh yeah there was just this random point where the crowd did like a jim duggan oh oh and i just like what so um william regal tries to put on his brass knuckles and edge hits a wheel kick off the top rope and the yeah. brass knuckles just fucking fly out of his hands, and Edge just steals them. Oh, by the way, why are they having... Uh, I just wanted to uh, mention, why are they having Nick Patrick, a guy who we established in the rubble as a cricket official, checking for the brass knuckles, unless the idea is to make it seem like he's doing his job while well, still favoring they Regal want, in the end? Because they want you to forget that he's a fucking crooked referee from the NWO. No, oh, that's you oh, he that. was. I didn't remember. Yeah, no, that was that. his gimmick. Was he joined the NWO because he was sick of Chris Jericho mistreating him, and then like he left the NWO, and that's why he was like such a big deal for why he was refing Stark in '97. And now we got like, the please forget about it phase of <laughs> Nick Patrick. <laughs> WCW, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> please, Basically. please don't. Please forget. So Edge okay. nails William Regal with Which the brass knuckles. Which is weird, knuckles. considering what happens uh, later. Edge nails William Regal with the brass knuckles, gets the pin, one, two, and then Nick Patrick's like, oh, wait a minute, you got brass knuckles on. Because he didn't drop the knuckles. Because, like, when William Regal time. hits you with the power of the punch, he's quickly stuffing that shit back in his trunks or <laughs> when he's he, pinning always, you. Or he's throwing it to the side. Yeah, he gets it out of sight of the ref. <laughs> but Edge is just like, yeah, and then he gets DQ'd. <laughs> And then he just immediately punches Nick Patrick. Then he punches with it. Nick Patrick. Then he then Charles Robinson runs out and he spears Charles Robinson. And then another ref comes out. And then out. some he OVW out. ref comes out and he gets fucking thrown out the ring. And then the, this this kind of weird refs. balding ref gets speared. 
Yeah, it's just I had the note, never gonna stop spearing riffs. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, not also added to the two pounds alert along with slackers and the truth. They bring up Prime Minister Tony Blair. Yes. I just wanted to mo- uh, note that like I know that uh, I, I I like that they're kind of making Edge kind of a wild man, but at the same time there's like Okay, you punched Nick Patrick. Why the other guys? They didn't do anything. Because he was angry. Because he was angry. I don't I know. I don't know. I, I question his face status when he uses brass knuckles to cheat, which, you know, is sort of turnabout fair play. But he doesn't let go of the brass knuckles, gets himself dq by being an idiot, and then just starts beating up refs out of anger. Yeah. So the refs sort of escort oh, him out, a little, oh, and then hang he... on, hang on, hang on. Shut there up! A little... no. <laughs> I just wanted to mention that during the commentary, uh, Jerry actually, uh, like, like they were talking about he, they were talking about um, Regal's power of the punch, and then he says, he's like, he's like, uh, he has the power of the punch. He's uh, got the power of the punch. Guy- oh! Mike Tyson had the power punch. Muhammad Ali had the power punch. I'm like, yeah, uh, because Jerry Lawler's gimmick is he doesn't, he's ignoring the fact he's using brass knuckles. Right, right, right. But he punched him with I, his I, fist. I immediately go, I immediately go um, oh. Jerry, Muhammad Ali did not have that powerful punch. That's not what he was known for. He had decent, <laughs> he had decent punches. He was, he was more of an outboxer than an inboxer. He would pretty yeah. much he was or he was like an outboxing counterpuncher. He would like try and tire people out and then use combinations to t- finish them off. Yeah, exactly. He was more like he was more of the guy that would do, like sh- he was like But he's not the boring he, he counterpuncher would, like, he would, like, like he fucking would, like, shuffle he would like shuffle back and forth and make you and m- make you miss. Or he'd rope a dope and like make all your blows kind of not hurt that bad. Right. He wasn't boring like you were about to say fucking like Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather because he, Floyd Mayweather is also a counterpuncher, but he just sort of like stays back all the match and then just wins by decision most of the time. And like winning by decision is a fucking coward's move. You you go for that TKO, motherfucker. Uh, Either it's a coward's move if you're a counterpuncher because it's just you're basically you're saying, not oh, countering enough. <laughs> you're not countering enough, you baby. <laughs> Let's see if we can get beat up by Floyd Mayweather by by the end of the year. Floyd currency Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for interrupting you, Ali. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> oh, that's fine. So uh, Edge is escorted out, and he sort of like does this weird smile while backing up through the parking lot. <laughs> like uh, hey, it, hey, hey, hey. It's yeah. It's more. He, it's more. It's more of the. He Edge did that. Gonna be, he's going to be known for later. <laughs> he did that all the way to the next venue. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then, oh, Kane's nipples. And then Kane's nipples. I oh, didn't. Yeah. I didn't notice this about his about his fucking his singlet is the fact that his like the black parts are like a weird mesh thing. Yeah, so that was the thing can... about Kane's O2 costume. He doesn't have the new mask yet, where it kind of reveals his jaw, but he's wearing like sort of like a semi see through fishnet. Kind yeah. of hanging on top. Yeah, the mesh thing, and it just so you can absolutely see his nipples, and it's just like, Kane's why nipples. does this? Like the red parts aren't see through like the black, so it's like, why can't the black be more opaque? I don't know. Maybe maybe he wants it to breathe easier. <laughs> maybe Kane's <Probably>. balls. <laughs> no, we didn't see those. Thankfully, I have nipples. So sweat. big I show must, shows up. <laughs> Big I show must sh- make sure I don't have nipple sweat. <laughs> Big Show shows up to talk to Kane, and he just goes like, "Hey, you that threw me out of the ring. That's pretty impressive. Not a lot yeah, of people throw me out nice. of the ring." And here's the thing: How many Royal Rumbles has Big Show won so far? Fucking one. One. So but far. He had- well, because he won the um, he won the two thousand Rumble, but that was a technicality. Because he didn't get okay, I'm trying to remember how it went. It was so, like rock, shen, rock shenanigans him out of the rumble. So he's been in a few rumbles. He's been in. That rumbles means he's since, been like, thrown out more than once. <laughs> I feel like he may have been in one rumble. I think he's more talking about the I. Uh, uh, I don't just maybe just maybe this is the first time someone's actually picked 
them uh, the entire weight of them up and throwing them over. Yeah, doing it single handedly. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, like... Okay, but yeah, Big Show's impressed, and he's just like, I respect you, man, but next time we fight, it won't be the same. And then they kind of do, like, a weird handshake. Yeah, where they get really up close and tight. And And now they're a tag team, I guess. Just Subtle homoeroticism, ladies and gentlemen. Subtle homoeroticism. And speaking (laughs) of subtle homoeroticism, (laughs) William and Charles. Yes. (laughs) William and Charles. Billy yes. and Chuck are like, hey, man, we like big red things, too. You want a cane headband? <laughs> man, we were so upset when he didn't take the cane headband. <laughs> I wanted Kane to take the headband. <laughs> that would have been so great. Something I, Billy, I immediately Chuck, no- Kane. <laughs> something I immediately noticed is that, is that Kane is talking essentially normally here, and I'm just like wondering... How long has he actually been talking under He's the mask? He's been talking under the point? mask since like 2000. Okay. Yeah. Like it was box. like voice box, then Paul Bearer, and then he just started talking like normal. I think it went like Paul Bearer, voice box, Paul Bearer, then I can talk now. I think it was after he joined up with X Pac and, yeah. he, and he said, suck it. <laughs> uh. I don't well, know. That maybe... wasn't, wasn't that like essentially still kind of voice box? Was but like he, maybe he was, it was. I don't remember I, because he he did he was using his voice, but it was meant to sound like he was talking through the voice box. Yeah, That's why yeah. He did it that he was like suck it, suck it. <laughs> so Billy and Chuck give Kane a headband, and Kane is like so upset by it that he just like <laughs> throws it down in disgust. And, and they then beat just, him up. And then Chuck just Fuckers spears him into there. a door and they both beat him up. <laughs> Man, Kane, you could have made friends here. You could have accepted the headband. Then we <laughs> cut to strangely shirtless Kurt Hennig. <laughs> yeah. Kurt Hennig just kind of shows up shirtless, no singlet. And talks to Deborah and sort of like vaguely flirts with her and the, it's slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> Especially oh, yeah. because of the shirtlessness and the fact that we can see Kurt Hennig's like awful blonde chest hair yes can i just say if you're a natural blonde don't don't do chest hair and don't do facial hair speaking of not being a natural blonde rick flair comes (laughs) ah yes um we have a ongoing thing of the rick flair drunk meter where i try and assess how drunk i think he is i currently have one beer for courage i think he's i think he's a little buzzed just so he could get that get the willies out you know (laughs) I don't. I did not take notes on this because I can't. I think it was just him talking about how he kicked Vince McMahon's ass. Oh yeah, he kicked Vince McMahon's Pretty ass, much. and he showed the pictures that Reed took. One was like a really blurry. Actually, pic- he said it was his, it was daughter. So that, wouldn't that have been Ashley? No, he has no, to. No, Reed, and Megan. No, Reed, Reed, Reed and Megan were at the show. Okay, it was Megan. Probably Megan then. So yeah. we, first picture was a really blurry picture of Ric Flair, like taking his yeah, robe off. Was, <laughs> why would he show that as the first photo? And then the second picture is the picture they taught during they took during that brawl they did, where like they're both bleeding and Vince McMahon is glaring into the amp camera, fucking cross eyed. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he so did that on fucking is, purpose. <laughs> so what we're saying is that Reed is a shitty cameraman. Not, not as bad Reed. as The Rock. A, sh- a shitty photographer, excuse me. Not as a bad it's not camera. not Reed, though. Megan. We no, no, we, no, we had the camera. Oh. Reed and Megan were both at the show. I think Reed was the one that... Vince Reed the had camera. the camera. Megan didn't. Yeah. He was... But Rick was saying Megan was the one that doing the shots, though. I thought he said Reed. Okay, maybe... maybe he was saying it. my daughter... He's saying... That's part of the problem. He's Reed's like, my, my daughter. daughter <laughs> <laughs> look, look, Ric Flair's drunk, okay? Did I just say Reed this Reed was saying that? I'm sorry. No, I'm just Ric Flair's drunk, okay? Okay. So Vince so, McMahon comes out and starts acting like a real pervert. <laughs> yes. Oh god, I forgot. Just like, he really You all lose. Oh yeah, he said everyone at the Royal Rumble lost, and it's like Nobody it, wins. What did does every are you retroactively saying that everybody lost their matches? <laughs> yeah. And then he just exactly. makes a weird face and just slowly backs out of the fucking arena. God, he was so creepy. He is saying that you know, he says, I'm gonna do something I'm, I'm gonna do I'm, something I'm, fucked up, yo. Pretty much. <laughs> And I, and so 
given what we end up, what he ends up doing at Royal Rumble, I, am I the only one feeling like he wished, uh, he, I wish he was less vague about this? I know they wanted to build this, but like, give us some hints that some people who who have the knowledge to figure it out can 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 go can take on this. Here's the yeah. thing, Rocktan. They can't do that because sometimes they don't know what they're doing either. They're just That's hinting true. at a thing happening. That's true. Yeah. Um, here's this was my uh, uh, the idea I came up for for this promo. I go he goes NWO and then he just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be you can't catch me. Ha! Uh, my ah. idea would be like, yeah, Rick, I lost at the Rumble, but you know that I don't take losing well. I've been losing for a while right now, and I hate it. But the end, the end, Rick, I always win. Even if I have to do something drastic, something that I, I even can't come back from, at least not easily, I always win. You gotta be more of a pervert, Roctane. You can't just... <laughs> See, Rick, I'll always, always win. win. <laughs> I always win. <laughs> and then you do <sighs> something with your tongue. <sighs> See, Rick? <sighs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to get into prime pervert. Vince man, <laughs> I always win. See, Rick, before you came, <sighs> there was something you had to deal with. Even if you didn't deal with it directly, it affected everyone else around. I'm free balling right now, Rick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, it even affected me. Just like right now, I started losing. Oh, that, that fucking hurts my throat to keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll just do it normally. I had to change everything just to start winning again. You may not understand it yet, Rick, but I'm about to do something I'm going to regret, and this time I'm, I'm not sure even myself. I can come back from it this time. But by God, I will find a way to win, Rick, because I always do. And then he can do the you'll see, Rick. Yes. You'll see. <laughs> Also, um, but that, that was that was my idea to like hint. That was my idea to hint at what he was doing. Anyway, uh, hello, he ladies. Vaguely <laughs> mentioned that he's talking about the NWO. The ladies so. are greeted, and Val Venus comes out. We must greet the ladies. Why am I still rubbing my nipples? Oh, Vince McMahon. <laughs> That's how I get into my pervert Vince McMahon mode. I thought you I had always... to like pretend. I thought you had to mimic just waking up from a pile of cocaine. Oh, yeah, I, also, I, didn't do my, I didn't do my snort. I did not do my snort and my primal <laughs> orgasmic growl that I always do with my Vince McMahon and Brett. <laughs> right, <I'm wrong. laughs> Hold on. <sighs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, it's important. It's important to stick to routine, folks. I feel so alive. <laughs> Nothing says Monday Night Raw like doing a bump. Yes, <laughs> and now we are here with a professional greeter of ladies, Val Venus. You know, Ooh. Val, if you're gonna come across the as the guy that can woo the ladies, maybe you should try to make your voice smoother and get rid Jesus, of that growling yeah. distortion. Hello, ladies. Okay, yeah, let's- I At least Phil if you're Venus. going for <laughs> Okay, maybe not like that. <laughs> at least at least if he was going for the stereotype guy that's trying Who to like wants move... to fuck <laughs> a stereotype of the guy that doesn't have a clue and thinks they can woo the ladies by being smooth. No, because they're selling the gimmick as he still can Former woo porn the ladies. Star. Well, have you I seen mean, his Titan Tron? Going... It's I'm all fucking like sex metaphors. I'm just saying if he's going for that stereotype. It should be like, hello, lady. <laughs> so, so Val Venus decides to rub himself and then stops before he takes his towel off because he wants one of the women in the audience to take off his towel. Who wants to see the big Valpowski's big fat honky wiener? All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we get a segment very much like, like a Rick Rude taking off the rope, but here it's like, I want a lady to take off my towel. So we cut to Waller, a blonde woman. Did, did Rick Rude take off a towel? Because I don't remember. No, that. he took off a robe. He he always takes oh, his robe the off. Robe, right. Yeah. So oh yeah. Jerry Lawler mentions robe. that he hopes it's not someone in a turtleneck sweater, and I don't know why. Yeah, I had that on my notes of Jerry Lawler hates turtlenecks, which is how I knew we were talking about this segment. 
where it's just yeah and there's like a whole bunch of women just like yeah and then there's just like a very generic just blonde woman that is clearly not a plant and uh Valvina is just like you with the with the with the hair and uh, uh, and uh, 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 and uh. Uh, and uh, like, what does that cringe. mean <laughs> that made me cringe instantly cuz <laughs> why don't you come up to the ring and find out what's under my towel it's not a gun i swear <laughs> i promise it's not a gun anyway yeah, he comes we... up and takes off his towel and then the and like whips around and then they kiss and I will argue this. I feel like this was consensual. You kind of thought it was a bit I of a thought he, I moment. thought he sort of like forced himself into a kiss, but Al- well, he le- he leaned in and she leaned in as well, so she didn't lean back or anything. That would have that would have been a problem. And um, here's the thing: sometimes I mispronounce words, and sometimes I misread words. And when Mister Perfect's hit, theme hit, I just called him Mister Precum. <laughs> <laughs> you had that ring down. <laughs> no, it's just something I remember. Uh, okay, so we're, we're think, in for. So I got. Well, very we're, we are dealing with Val V, so it's not that surprising. <laughs> so this is the battle of the towels because Mister Perfect had a towel, and so did Val Venus, Even though fucking Mister Perfect threw his yeah. towel when he was getting in the ring. I immediately go. Uh, I immediately go. We're having Val Venus for Mister Perfect. For no reason that I can discern. No, no, the reason is so Stone Cold can go beat up Kurt, go beat up Kurt Hennig. Yeah. And why is he beating up? Because Kurt he talks vaguely... shit about his wife. Or but he talks shit about Austin. Or he How did Austin in... find out? Did he, he watched the show. He watched the TV. <laughs> Okay. He tuned in. He it, he was watching Rikishi's ass on the nine. <laughs> ass on the nines, weather on the eights, Kurt Hennick flirting with his wife on the tens. Don't what do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was Rikishi's ass on the nines, and then it cut to Kurt Hennig flirting with vague flirting with his wife. And so he decided to beat up So uh, he stunners fucking Kurt Hennig and then Nash is over. Val Venus sort of grabs a mic and goes like I wouldn't talk behind your back. I would say it Actually, to your face. He... And also, I'd fuck your wife. <laughs> exactly. He goes like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Actually, like, actually flirt with he, your wife. Didn't he attack him with a steel chair first? No. No. Well, he, no, no. The beatdown came after the promo. Oh. He might have, he might have attacked Kurt Hennig. With I swear it was, no, the, the steel chair was first. It, either, it was either first or was after go, he, he started. Beat, he didn't do a beat down after the promo. The, he just did the promo and left. And then, no, I remember him hitting a stunner on Venus. And then Stone well, yeah, Cold. Yeah, he did, but that was before. And then Stone yeah. Cold, who's holding a mic, inhales and then just immediately stunners Val Venus. And then gets down and just goes, what, 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 one of which is the big Valboski would look you square in the eyes and fuck your wife. <laughs> the other is I would the big probably Valbowski want I would look I, square in the eye, even though my penis doesn't have eyes. Because <laughs> because both competitors have towels, we started talking about a theoretical towel match between yes, the two. The towel match. Where it's like a strap match. Where, where no, you no, have you got towel. like a long towel tying both their wrists, and they got a towel in their other hand, and they have to whip them with the towel. Oh my god! And touch and touch all corners, all and four corners. To, and it has to be whipped, and, it, and the only towel hits can be on the ass. <laughs> and oh the god, only yes. towel <laughs> hits can be on the ass. I and I'll be honest, that sounds like a terrible match, but I would probably watch it. <laughs> So, uh, another thing we noticed is uh, Steve Austin went down to his local Walmart or Sears and he purchased a digital watch so he can look at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got a watch now. Bare what? arm. He actually, actually is wearing a watch. Oh, yeah, then he cuts the promo talking about the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. No, no, he, first of all, he describes various currencies. <laughs> That's right. I don't remember the context of him describing various currencies. And then he starts saying, like, I'm going to tell you guys, the crowd, the, a story. A story about a man named Jed. <laughs> Actually, what he does is, like, I'm not going to store. I'm not going to tell you the, the story of the man named Jed. Uh, but then he starts doing it anyway. He starts doing it anyway. 
And I'm like, crude. If you're not, oil. if this isn't the story of the Better Heller Belly, then why are you reciting it? <laughs> he's like, essentially saying, I'm not here to tell, I'm not here to tell you a story. Well, I'll tell you anyway, just to waste your time. Tell a story about a man named Jed. There's a fucking song by Weird Al about it. You don't have to, you don't have to cover it, Stone Cold. It's fine. <laughs> Move down to Beverly. <laughs> And then he also that, that version he... doesn't have slurs in it. <laughs> uh. And uh, he then announces that he's going to be in the next Royal Rumble, the 2003 Royal Rumble. We'll and we'll we'll see you on that. <laughs> we, the, 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 there's what chance going on throughout because of course there are. And at one point, Austin says, "I'm going to torture somebody." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, you also <laughs> missed hoodwinked. Bamboozled, uh, flabbergasted, schmeckledorf. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he says, I'm going to torture somebody. And me and Allie were just like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I, when I heard that, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and we would have loved it if the crowd actually just kind of like was like, huh, The what, what? chants sort of go from like, what? And he started, to like, wait, what? <laughs> and, he was started, and he started saying something. I forget what it was now. But he was saying something that, like, I've heard, like, black preachers say. It was like... What? I forget. I, can't, I just can't remember what it was. It was what like... What the fuck? <laughs> no, he was, like, saying, can you can you hear me, sisters, or something. Well, I don't remember this part of the, of the promo. Mainly because all I remember was, I'm going to torture somebody. Anyway. Man, I, I wish I remembered what he said it was. But, yeah. So, yeah, the whole purpose is, is to say he's in the Rumble next year, and I'm thinking, that's not exactly... Oh, and also that he's going to kick someone's ass at WrestleMania, regardless of if he's in a title match or not. That was the other thing he oh, was going to say. Oh, I missed that, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, being in the Royal Rumble next... Uh, either way, this is not exactly big news on the level of Rock versus Cena at Mania in a year's time. And I'm thinking, why was this promo necessary at all? Because he's just he's telling people that he's going to have a match at WrestleMania, even if he's not for any title. Why? I'm going to have a non-title match. Because people wanted to watch Stone Cold. Okay. Because, yeah, it's Stone Cold's over. It's not a Roman Reigns thing where they're forcing Stone Cold to be over. Stone Cold's over enough that some people wouldn't buy WrestleMania X8 unless he was on the card. Well, I mean... Why wouldn't he be, though? <laughs> I guess... That... But because they wanted Stone Cold to cut a promo. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. He, he, he you understand going... what a crowd is, Rock Day? <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's... It is... I guess the way they did it just made the whole promo felt unnecessary. <laughs> like, they could have... Like, this could have been, like, done really fast, but it was, like... It felt like a... Mostly a waste of time until... It, that they got two hours, them. Rock Tan. They got to fill it out somehow. Yes, <laughs> not with wrestling, of course. This that would be that would be of silly. Course. Well, so, speaking of wrestling, we got a tag match now. Big Show. Wait, no, Billy and Chuck. It's or as Lee Garcia announces them as Chuck and Billy. Chuck and Billy, Billy and Chuck, William and Charles, as I call them. <laughs> Billy and Chucky, as 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 Jerry Lawler keeps trying to get over, versus Kane and the Big Show. Yeah, Big Show just suddenly shows up as a tag team partner despite it being kind of a handicap match, or at least implied to be a handicap match. So Big Show and Kane are a tag team now. And referee Penny Long is here to officiate this tag team match, player. And this match was very short. Big Show, like, pulled his singlet down to show his nipples off. And then when he ran the ropes... he was the only one without his nipples out. And and then when he he ran the ropes, he knocked Kane off the apron. He was the only one who wasn't with his nipples out, so he felt left out. A strange thing happened just as they uh, as they were going around the ramp before uh, as they were as they before the match started, or like it was actually just as the match is starting. Suddenly, Kane does his pyro bit. Like, oh yeah, that was like, a weird he, he... spot to do that. Yeah, it was very weird. Yeah, he did it like after the match started, right? It yeah. was just as the match as was starting, essentially. Yeah, usually <laughs> maybe Kane forgot. Or maybe Kane forgot, and he was like, "Ah, oh, shit, I gotta hold on." Because Big Show came out, I guess. So ah, fuck it, boom. Ah, uh, uh, boom. 
Uh, gay joke count surprisingly zero. Yeah, no I gay have jokes. To, I, I have to do my I have to do my promo even though even though the match has started already. Yeah, just no gay jokes. Good good job. Good job, WB. I'm surprised and impressed. So we cut to the back, and Triple H is talking to The Rock, and The Rock is talking about how Triple H has to like squint and scowl at everyone all the time. I do like. I did like that. <laughs> Him making fun of Triple H's scowl was pretty funny. I don't remember what he said. <laughs> I don't. There's just there's I, just grumblings about how The Rock isn't in the main title picture now. Yeah, I barely remember the promo. I did not take notes on it at all. Anyway, was, uh, this next match is sponsored by one eight hundred Call AT and T. Ah, <laughs> oh my! Is it also God. sponsored by Blockbuster? or Was that something else? No, that was later. That's later, okay. So there's a recap from the Slam of the Night, sponsored by, you know, Call Collect, about how Maven pretty much eliminated The Undertaker at the Royal Rumble. And then The Undertaker murdered Maven. strange angelic music playing over the whole thing. Thanks to this recap, actually, I can say that Mega Fighter was right. Taker did eliminate him, because I actually saw it, uh, they showed it happening. Which brings me to Maven something that has always bugged me about Rumble. Something I mentioned on the C show. Someone who gets eliminated should not be able to then do it to someone else. Oh, it's fine if they don't be a over. don't be a fuddy duddy. That's kind of the thing about the Rumble. I guess yeah, I always that always bugs Bullshit me. Bullshit always happens. People it's hide under the fucking if they ring. Over the re- ropes for revenge or beat down. Scotty Too Hotty got his fucking. Count. Scotty Too Hotty got his fucking face punched in before he came out. <laughs> several, several for several rumbles, in fact. Well, yeah, that's true. And then we get the Godfather. D- no, we get WWF New York specifically. Oh right, 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 right. right. Yeah, the APA. Bradshaw and Farouk are drinking and smoking at WWF New York, and, they this, and there they, was uh, a child sitting behind food. the two of them, looking very uncomfortable. <laughs> and they have a bunch of plates of food that don't look like they've really been eating them. I want those fries. Are you gonna eat? Are you gonna eat those chicken wings, <laughs> dude? I want some of those fries, man. <laughs> you want some? You want a French fries? I want a French fries. <laughs> I feel like we're not talking about the matches because they're so repetitive. They're so but... repetitive, or they just, they're so short that you may as well not have had them. Yeah. Like, at least I don't these even... weird segments they keep doing are something worth talking about. Yeah. Like, Kane, Kane and Big Show versus Billy and Chuck. All we remember was, like, the Kane or the Big Show fucking up a thing and then getting pinned. Yeah, mm-hmm. Big Show knocked Kane off the apron and then got pinned. Oh, didn't he? What didn't he? It was take, a dirty. Like, it, was, it, was, it was a. Uh, really it was a dirty pin. Because it um, was basically um, what happened is, yeah, Chuck, like, like I think Chuck held him down. Big Show got thrown into the ropes while Kane was on the apron and and inadvertently knocked him off. Yeah, something like that. And then Kane's so, acting like you did that on purpose. Did we cut to... Actually, there was no segment of Kane and Big Show arguing that, that day. Yeah, that oh, was what? weird. Okay. It just kind of ended. Anyway, we cut like to the argument. Godfather, who's just doing pimp stuff in the back, except he has, he claims that he went legit, and his escorts are no longer his hoes. They are his escorts. It's an escort service, which I still feel And is a then he made to... a very surprisingly progressive statement about, like, these women choose to make money. Yeah. Oh, and uh, it's I their to, decision I, to be my escorts, and I'm like, go Godfather. <laughs> I'm, Wasn't I'm, it like I'm, you went I'm, woke I'm, Godfather like... and then you went unwoke Godfather? Oh yeah, because he went like, because everybody wants to see ass. <laughs> and I was like, okay, unwoke Godfather. <laughs> If the if the god I have I had the thought if the Godfather is a legit and has escorts instead of hoes, does this he means have to he has to change his cat phrases the or escort get rid of one? train? <laughs> chug chug. I, yeah. I still well, wonder he, if this... wouldn't that also mean he yeah wouldn't he have to get rid of pimping eight easy because it's not, not pimps pimping. up pimp legitimate businessmen up escorts down. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this is a reference to the fact that Charles Wright actually did own a strip club around this he time. He looks fucking great, by the way. I really appreciate the fact he, like, lost weight and he looks good. 
Oh, he yeah. does look really good. He looks really good. I don't like props to props to Charles. Oh, uh, by the way, by the way, when uh when God was come on out, I I heard Jerry say this and Emmy Limit. Oh my God, he goes wrap your thighs around my it. face, huh? <laughs> This is rated PG for puppies are good. Go to hell, Lawler. It's not rated PG. It's rated TV 14. <laughs> At least Raw is. <laughs> that's that's what I saw on the network on the network rating. <laughs> so the Godfather brings out some women and says, everybody wants to look at ass. And then he's like, all right, ladies, show them what you got. And then like this weird industrial music started playing and I was confused, but it turns out it was just Lance Storm's theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, he, he 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 says if you want if you want if you want an escort, call one eight hundred Godfather. And I was like, too and many letters. You can't. <laughs> too many I, letters. Too many. I wonder letters. how many guys actually tried to call that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too, too many, many letters. There's too many, there's too many letters. You gotta have you seven. Call AT and T. Call AT and T has seven. <laughs> this says eight. <laughs> you should have done. I'm only on. Uh, uh, hello, I'm only on T. Hot singles. How did you know I was calling? One eight hundred Godf. One eight hundred Godfat. Godf. No Godf. It would it be G O D F Godf. No, that's wrong. One It would be one eight hundred G O D F A T H E. Oh Godfaf. Godfaf. <laughs> You should have just done like one eight hundred. Well, no, it would be G O D F A T H. So God fat, or God fat, <laughs> as I call it. Hello, I'm only on H. How did you know I was calling? Uh, we'll figure out. We'll figure out a better one eight hundred number. Was so, there? I... The ladies start dancing to Lance Storm's theme, and Lance Storm comes out and goes, <laughs> "You have tainted the wrestling ring with your various female escorts, like a." And then he made some kind of reference to like a three-legged he, donkey isn't a he donkey. Said, he, said <laughs> that, yeah. he said that he said that his business was as legitimate as a three-legged donkey, and that a three-legged donkey isn't legitimate. But but I are I contend this. What if what if you had what if the donkey had gotten like gangrene and had to have its leg cut off, Lance Storm? Does that make that donkey any less legitimate? Does it turn a donkey into a wheelbarrow, Lance Storm? Answer it's us. Not- <laughs> at one point, he at one point, as he's saying that, he says, "Whatever," as if he, as if like someone told him, is it, it, did someone give this as a script, and he actually like someone fed him that it, line? Yeah, fed They're him just, that line, and he and he goes, "I actually have to say this," and then he either that or like, yeah, I think like it was part of the script of like he went on a, like a tangent, and then it's like, oh, whatever. But it's yeah. still it's just. That was, I that what, was something I, I noticed, Lance like, wasn't said, able to get over. So Lance Storm marches down to the ring and gets hoe trained, or I mean, escort trained. I don't know. <laughs> get escort trained by. Uh, I'm which, glad which, I came up with that. I that thought. <laughs> escort trained sounds actually way weirder. <laughs> <laughs> get on the escort train. Like 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 Godfather trained him in how to be a professional escort. <laughs> Make sure you know how to talk to the ladies, Lance. <laughs> Wine him and dine him. Make sure you get your money, though. Don't let it. Don't let anyone touch your dick unless they pay for it. Uh. So yeah, Godfather beats up, uh, beats beats up Lance from he 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 gets Lance out Strong. of there. And I th- and I'm thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing this too in a match if they continue this from here. Maybe, so yeah, but... we cut to gold dust. Yes, we cut from sex stuff to more sex stuff. With gold dust is talking about <laughs> quotes from the Godfather three. Uh, yes, he does. Every time I'm out, they pull me back, back in. Al Pacino, Godfather Part Three. Which is that a joke on the fact that we just had a Godfather segment? Probably. <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> I thought of that's that good... when like he was talking. I was like, oh my god, is that what that's a joke on? Anyway, remember the name Gold Dust. Remember the Help. name Gold Dust. All he's, that stuff. He's, he's, some he's of the hinting. Go- He's sitting there. Yeah, he's he's talking somewhere. about some a uh, a uh, uh, he, and him. what he doesn't. We don't him. have any idea who he's talking about. The Powerpuff I... Girls villain, him. <laughs> <laughs> be very appropriate. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah. So we cut to the back. Stephanie's complaining about everything. Oh, that ugly Stephanie in her tor- turtleneck sweater. Yeah, her fucking turtleneck sweater. 
God, Jerry Lawler would, would think she's just the biggest pile of dog shit. Yeah, so she's complaining to Triple H, which is a recurring part of these shows. You I don't know, know if this... You know, I was actually thinking that... I wonder if um, Steph and Trips were actually having, like, problems in their real life relationship. They weren't married yet. They weren't married yet. They were. Oh, they weren't? Oh, I don't okay. know if they were even dating. Well, they they married point. later. Okay, but, well, they at least had a relationship, so I'm just wondering if they were. And Honestly, then, given how this was after, like, the China firing and stuff, I can see that. Yeah, I'm just, like, I'm just wondering if they were and they used that as a way to, as, as to add to the, as a story bit that decided to use it. Yeah, so that's yeah I had. possibly. Uh, but <laughs> maybe yeah, we get a maybe they decided, maybe they decided, you know, we, we keep yelling at each other. Maybe if we yell each other in the ring, we'll go back home and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I love you so much. <laughs> That, I don't, I don't think know. That's how you, I don't think that's a. a, a the only thing I wish is I wish Godfather, therapy. or I mean, I or wish Goldust. Somehow, I wish Goldust <laughs> only quoted bad movies. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I would, that's I a lot would. of fish. Godzilla, Godzilla 2000. 1999. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, it wouldn't be. It'd be that's a lot of fish. Matthew Broderick, Godzilla. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's the actor. It's the actor, and then the movie. I got to think of more bad lines. Fuck. Well, we'll work on it. Uh, uh, me we, apart, Lisa. Oh, I got, I got one. The room. I get, I got, I, I got one. I get, one. I, get one. I got one. I hate sand. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. Star Wars Hayden episode Christensen. one. The Phantom Star- Menace. That was episode <laughs> two. Damn it. Oh, episode two. Hayden I'm sorry. Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Star Wars yeah. episode two. The Clone Wars. It was Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. Yeah. You're, You're both fuck fired. You. Fuck you. <laughs> You're both fired. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Prequel trilogy for shit. Fuck you. <laughs> Ryan Johnson fanboys. <laughs> you don't tell me, Dad. <laughs> what? Before you even learn to spell your. John Travolta, Battlefield Earth. Slightly <laughs> cut off, but I got you. Yeah. Or I, I actually, that's not the full goal. Before you learn to spell your name, I was conquering galaxies. Well, yeah. I was being trained to conquer galaxies. I'm trained, yeah. Take, yeah. I'm gonna take their face off. Off. Nicholas Cage. That wasn't a bad movie. Face Fuck off. you. Okay. Oh, let's oh, no. no, it was corny. I loved it. It's just. <laughs> I, it's not the best movie in the world. It's but silly. God, it it's silly. <laughs> Man, we are really avoiding talking about this main event tag match. It's a main event tag match. <laughs> that is the only note I have is this was a main event tag match. The Rock got a, got his win back after Jericho hit Angle with the bell on accident. Yes, that it is was, that is all we It was very was standard tag match shit. Pretty much. I will uh, there is something I noticed. Uh, no no noted about this. Um you know Rock does the spine buster, and once again, JR says, spine on on the the- He said that every week so far. I actually figured out what that means, and I can't believe I didn't realize it before. It's under about the sex. Ring, under, under the, the, the ring, ring, there's wood. Yes. There is- <laughs> so the spine buster on <laughs> the wood. That's the conclusion we've come to. <laughs> but under the, the ring, ring, there's wood. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I get what he's saying. It's it's he's saying he hit him with a spine buster onto the wood of the mat. But the problem the with that is they usually make a point to mention when someone pulls off the mat during a match. So it sort of makes sense. Well, it rhymes, and Jr. is going to fucking use it. So you should. <laughs> well, you know what? What does Jr. know? The fucking the fucking floor mats are made of the fucking the fucking floor mats are made of oak. <laughs> <laughs> a spine on the mahogany. <laughs> a spine on the corkboard. A oh, spine yeah, on I, the teeth. Yeah, that's, that's the other. That's the, the other spine problem. Spine on the corkboard would be hilariously broken. <laughs> yeah, that's the other problem with that quote. How does he know that the wood that the wood they use underneath is pine? I made it hey, 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 Egg Fighter, hey. Birch. <laughs> Birch. Birch. <laughs> In jokes. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> obscure, super obscure in jokes. Yes. I was I ran out of birch when I was making a Minecraft house with Mega Fighter, and Mega Fighter just shows up and he's just like, "Hey, hey, birch, <laughs> just <laughs> throw some at me." <laughs> I said it in a really aggressive way, so it's just like, "What?" <laughs> but that was raw. That was raw. I didn't like it. <laughs> I yeah, it was like there was some fun parts to it, but otherwise, like. The wrestling here is so disappointing. I think it might be because it's post, it's post pay per view, so everyone's kind of exhausted. But <laughs> it's just a lot of a lot of like copying, and a lot of weirdness. So we do a recap of what happened, like a mixture of what happened at the Rumble and what happened on Raw for the opening of SmackDown, about how Vince McMahon lost at the Rumble. Lost, lost, lost at the Royal Rumble. Lost. Vince <laughs> lost. He lost the Royal Rumble. He lost at the Royal Rumble. He lost. Oh, yeah. He lost the oh, Royal God. Rumble. He lost the lost, lost, lost the Royal Rumble. I, can we talk about the fucking grayscaling only covering their faces? Yeah, and like, it wouldn't. You know, you, it wouldn't yeah, because it wouldn't God. cut in right away, and then they started like giving Vince McMahon red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, because usually pasta when they sent the creepy pasta Vince McMahon, because usually when they sent to the blood, and they grayscale like the whole screen. To oh, make so they it, kept like, repeating right. "lost at the Royal Rumble," <laughs> and also regret <laughs> and regret, 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 regret. This was so, I I don't remember any of the editing, but I do have the note of what is this editing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, and like fucking Phoenix Wright music was playing over it pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> what is this weird ass stock music they're using? I don't know. So, I'm so SmackDown starts. They're still in South Carolina. I think they're in a different town, though. No, North, Cal they're, North, they're Charleston. North Charleston Coliseum, yes. Okay. RVD just fights William Regal for some reason. They have a match. And RVD and just wins in, like, a minute. <laughs> That's why I had, yeah. what the fuck was this? This was a total squash. He yeah. destroyed William Regal, who, this was a non-title match, by the way, but he just wrecked his shit. I feel like, I feel like they should have just retconned it and said, oh yeah, now this was for the title. Here you go, RVD. You deserve it for just so destroying after, him so quickly. After RVD yeah, just... I, that, that's what my question is. It's like, after RVD just obliterates William Regal, Edge runs in wearing straight clothes and beats down William Regal some more. I feel bad well, that, for William Regal. That's Riegel. fine. I, I don't, but like... Why didn't you just have him do that? <laughs> Why not have a point where, where Edge spears Regal and costs him a match against RVD that's a little yeah, more competitive? You know, that would have not... be worked better. It's like, have the match start, Edge comes out, spears him, and interrupts. It's something so... like that. Just this, like... Re Regal didn't I know... need to be pinned. That's the thing. I know, and I know this is uh, this is a kind of a problem they've... they've, they've done over the years is when like oh we can't have this person win so there's gonna be so they rely on shenanigans way too much like to i get cowardly someone. heel but it just feels like why did rob van dam win he's not even like part of any feud they just they just ping pong rvd into matches they're like uh oh, we don't have a second guy rvd <laughs> just, they just squashed a really regal it's like what what was this because despite willie regal's talent at wrestling, he still cheats to win because it's easier for him, and he feels like it's a more sure thing. That's why he does it. It's not because he's bad. No, he's a fantastic wrestler. And also, RVD is not like thing, a thing he powerhouse. He's the athletics guy. Another yeah, Robin Dam is just the guy who's like super athletic and does flippy shit. It's... You know, another thing you could have done is have... RVD like come out and maybe aggressive um, initially and then throw him into the ring and like maybe go for the five star and as just as he's like have that have a a few seconds where William Regal pulls the brass knuckles out and he hits him and he's coming down or something like that. Something, you know, hear that or like have him try to put on the brass knuckles <laughs> and then RVD does like a fucking back spin kick and just knocks that shit out of his hand. And then, Ar yeah. then William Regal's like, "Oh fuck, I gotta wrestle him for real now." 
But at some point, you should still interrupt the match with Edge. How 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 long how how long was this match? Um, I actually have statistics because I got kind of mad about something that happened later, and I stopped doing my notes. This was yes. forty two seconds. So we've probably talked about this match longer than the match <laughs> actually was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, let's uh let's move on to the next match because I think uh, do we just go right into the this next is match? Like, yeah. I, uh, again, it's just like we. No, we, no, it cuts well, to Vince being a spooky pervert. A pro- shenanigans can be a problem. So, but in this case, I think it made it would make it make more sense. This is a it. pretty popular promo segment if you know what it is. But we were just kind of sitting there watching Vince McMahon holding a cup <laughs> and just yeah, muttering right. random things about cancer that aren't true. <laughs> I see you're drinking from a cup. <laughs> well, then we made a joke about hard ticket to Hawaii. <laughs> About us, it's like, WWE has been bitten by a snake who was <laughs> injected with the blood of cancer. Blood of cancer infected rats. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man, if I knew that voice, that actor's name, was it? No, it wasn't. Okay. Why did I think it was um the fucking, the, the, the guy who always drinks that gets featured on Best of the Worst? And this is going to be a theme through Shit, the whole night where... Uh, how many times did he's we... in like so many movies and he was in uh, Cameron Mitchell Cameron Mitchell yeah I thought it was Cameron Mitchell but no he's not in Hard Ticket to Hawaii how did they, how many times during the night did they cut to Vince four. doing that like, they did this like four times four? each four, one was yeah. about three minutes so yeah. this is just a weird intermittent slog yeah it it it, it goes on uh, every this one is of these pretty goes on for famous like, if you, long like I said this he, is pretty famous if you know what it is but it's just like you know it doesn't mean they did it correctly. <laughs> yeah, they, they keep they keep having him do these like long pauses and just draw them out every, every time. And the thing is, the subject material of each segment throughout the night wasn't different enough that you could just edit it into like one slightly longer promo. <laughs> or you could have done like uh, uh, like have him do one opening promo bit and then one ending promo bit. So you uh, so you built you could still have that bit of mystery what's he gonna do and then just end end it with the final segment so um after vince mcmahon just is weird out comes jacqueline who apparently has her referee license and that's why she's the referee <laughs> how easy is it to apply there's been like no setup or like no explanation why she's a ref just like oh yeah she's she's a ref i'm the- <laughs> I'm thinking, is she not wrestling right now? Are they not using her? Is she injured? I don't know. Well, she can't be injured because why would an injured person referee a match? Exactly. So they don't have to take bumps. Yeah, but they still have to, like, slap their hand and risk injuring their arm or whatever. And they could still potentially take bumps all the time. If if something goes wrong. out comes Big big Boss Man or just Boss Boss Man and Rikishi. He is the boss. And man. Um, several signs. Show. One guy made a sign with just a giant ass. <laughs> and another oh, guy no. made a sign that says Rikishi dumped at my house. <laughs> oh my god. I oh, forgot right, about right, that. Right, right. No, I think that's the runner up is Rikishi dumped at my house because we were laughing at it so much. Oh my god. Okay, I think else? we also mentioned that there was a sign. It was either on here or on Raw, most likely Raw, that had someone's phone number. And if we had been able to get it down, we probably would have called them on this episode. Yes. Oh, and there was also <laughs> an, a, someone trying to advertise like an ROH, ROH yeah. show. Yeah, there was an RF <laughs> video sign, too. Oh, oh and wow. an RF video sign. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. That was on Raw, was the RF video sign. Which totally know. dates us to the 2000s. How, how long has our age been around? Uh, since like 2001, maybe? 2002, maybe? So, <laughs> um, 2000. it's kind of a very basic match. They're just two brawlers. There was this spot where like Boss Man almost hit Rikishi with the steel steps. <laughs> yep. I feel like Jacqueline just being the ref was just weird and it didn't add anything. <laughs> to the match. Why, why is she the special guest referee? And she spends most of the time just yelling at Boss Man. Yeah. Yeah. So which, Rikishi... I, I wonder, I which does, which does um, 
get a comment from Lawler about, I love a woman that's uh, assertive. It's like, thank you, Jerry. You actually said something complimentary. Yeah, Jerry is oddly, at times, very complimentary of, like, He's very like respectful that. to some women and then just disgusting towards other women. So, Rikishi gets gets the advantage and pretty much lands a bonsai drop on Big Boss Man for the win. Nice, fair bonsai drop. And then when they're talking about the match and the instant replay comes up, it's just Rikishi's ass taking up the whole screen and it startles Jim <laughs> Ross. <laughs> oh, ah, fuck! Oh, <laughs> that. Yeah, it just cuts to the camera has zoomed in to right into their key. You can yeah, see yeah, that yeah, vein yeah. on the upper left side and the fucking like cartilage. Deep in his ass. It was just as far up his ass as you could physically get without getting a <laughs> sexual assault charge. <laughs> <laughs> his ass was surprisingly smooth this time in if comparison you, if, to if, every if other doctor, time you've seen it. If you, if you wanted a, a, a doctor to start a colonoscopy from a, uh, from from watching a TV, this is the way to start it. You could see what he had for dinner. By God. <laughs> By God, indeed. So, recap of Stephanie shouting at Triple H about how, like, why aren't you killing people when I point at them? And Triple H is like, you, you bitch. I want to note, I just remembered that. Like, she says, when I point my finger, uh, you destroy. And she points her finger at herself. <laughs> uh, I think he just, about I think he just pointed at the wall. No, well, she pointed at the wall. And said she was like, like, there's the rock or whatever. And it's like, Stephanie, that's the wall. But she also points to herself. Like during that same I promo, I didn't see her do that when she said "I destroy," but I like, well, she she wasn't saying that then, but she still pointed at herself. So I'm wondering, has Triple H just been doing this because she pointed at herself? <laughs> when you pointed at me, I had to destroy the marriage, Stephanie. <laughs> when you pointed at me, I had to destroy myself, and his body just starts expanding like he, he, just, <laughs> he, just, he just disintegrates when he gets pointed. <laughs> I had to destroy myself, Stephanie. <laughs> he start, and he starts expanding like he's a uh, he starts expanding as like he's a giant Triple H balloon. Yeah, like he's fucking Tetsuo at the end of the year. <laughs> exactly. He's just turning into a goddamn like flesh monstrosity. Gondorigo, <laughs> help me! <laughs> Sean! Hunter! <laughs> Hunter! <laughs> Sean! <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest, the weirdest version of a cure yet. <laughs> so cure Stephanie and Lily and Garcia are just making coffee. Yes, with where uh, Lily yeah. Garcia takes like two cups. Yeah, she's drinking thing. from two different cups. She's drinking like a two cups of coffee stacked on top of each other. It's, it's so so. On, she's pouring this cup, and I just like, yeah, that's two cups. <laughs> and she's trying to be nice and be like, you know, I know you and Hunter are having problems. With yeah, so like you and Hunter are having issues, and it's okay. More people watching the show. <laughs> yep. All and important to watch the Lillian show and, and Stephanie just decides Triple H isn't my problem. You're my problem, and he just and she just throws hot coffee in her fucking face. Hot coffee scandal incoming. Yes, which means we can finally talk about this segment we've been planning. Russell Court. I don't yes. have the theme ready. Ah shit! Wrestle court. I, I gave you an opening, but we were not ready. I'm just thinking that we were gonna play. The so court, like, when he's, he's we gonna play, originally he's gonna play the people's court theme, but that might get us. When <laughs> we trouble. originally we gotta, we gotta closed something. the C show a couple years later, we decided that we wanted to do a podcast called Wrestle Court. Wrestle Court was like our journey through wrestling storylines. As we try and figure out how many crimes each wrestler's racked up. Oh, that's what this was. Okay. Yeah, but we, we decided to it. roll it into this because we would feel like we'd have more to talk about. And also, Razzle Court could just be a segment. So, yes. Mega Fighter made me look up the laws of assault and battery in North Carolina. Uh, South Carolina. Are they in South or North Carolina? They were in Charleston, right? Yeah, no, it was it the was North South, Charleston, was South Carolina. Carolina in South Carolina. Both times, South Carolina. So, 
I had to look up the level of aggravation in this in the assault and the injuries sustained, along with the malicious intent of the assault. So, it was a second degree malicious assault and battery, which can serve up to three years in prison and a twenty five hundred dollar fine. <laughs> Stephanie, you're on the rap sheet. Dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> that that Law and Order Chung Chung thing. I gotta get it ready next time. You got. I gave you the Rassel Court theme, didn't I? Yeah, but like I, it was the did. edited version, and I didn't like. I wanted the one without my voice in it. I gave you the one without your voice in it. Let's see if I can play the Law and Order Doink Doink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's just that's just fun. Uh. <laughs> uh. Cool. Uh. <laughs> Steph, you on the rap sheet. Anyway, You're Albert and Scotty. Yeah. No. <laughs> Albert and Scotty are fighting Spike and Taz again. <laughs> Yay! This is also for the tag titles. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> It led to the question because they start they start targeting like Scotty's neck brace and shit. Yeah, are they they heels? Are they heels? Are they like dancing heels? (laughs) That makes no sense to me. Uh, I I I was thinking, yeah. I mean, does it? It it doesn't. You don't need to be a face to take advantage of an injury, but it is. I I do think it's it is odd for. If this is essentially what what it seems to be a face tag team versus a face tag team, which is weird to begin with, but they're doing it, that why would the face wrestler attack someone who is also a face and and, and go for an injury? Yeah, it is a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and strange. like the way like they kept working unless the neck like, and an, unless there's some kind of animosity like they kept working them, the, but the we neck. don't have anything like that established like they kept working the neck and scotty too hotty was just playing really angry for some reason up until they did the worm <laughs> yes yep and albert mimicked the worm behind scotty as scotty did the actual worm which i i had to laugh i like that yeah uh, albert's great but then, like, you know, they get on the apron, they fight for a bit. Scotty misses a punch at Spike, and Taz just comes up behind him and gets him in the fucking Taz mission and drags his body over the ropes. He drags him over the rope, which was fucking cool. Yeah, that was a bit. Then we cut back to Stephanie good. and Triple H again, and Stephanie's like, I committed assault. <laughs> Isn't that great? And Triple H is like, whatever. You're gonna get us in trouble. Yeah, uh, I was yeah, I was hoping this whole time was like, do you realize what you've done, Stephanie? <laughs> do you realize so what- Triple H starts like or like Stephanie starts lamenting about how Triple H isn't really interested in doing what she says anymore. And Triple H just says, You're like your dad and your dad's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he gets pissed and walks off. And it's or- like something about maybe maybe you're the problem or whatever. I forget. And There's now, like, and now the rock. But he's, I think he says, maybe, maybe everyone was right about you. Yeah. Okay. That's what oh, it and, was. Oh, and speak. Oh, and speaking of what, Stephanie, you just gave. You just put. You're charged with assault. What the fuck? <laughs> Lillian Garcia is suing gonna get, the company. Gonna, well, yeah, yeah. You're gonna get charged with assault. Lillian is suing us. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so we are back to our weekly. Harassment of Jonathan Coachman by The Rock. It's n- nothing sexual this time, thank you. Nothing sexual this time, but The Rock starts demanding the coach do the Charleston. And it's really <laughs> strange. Note, because we're in Charleston, of course. Would you like to see the coach dance to Charleston? No. No. <laughs> and Co- Coachman doesn't know what a Charleston is. Yeah, he tries to do like a... Like a, I would call it like a two-step shuffle, but like he it, tries to do it like a Carlton dance, basically. That's what I was hoping he would do, honestly, just for, because that would have been funnier. I was hoping he would do, just break and start doing, doing. Also, the, the Rock promises the yet Carlton, again that he's then, going to wrestle someone, like, and the Rock is like, "That's not the Charles, and that's the Carlton." You, you fucking. 
<laughs> then he just they does rhyme, the Charleston. The same thing, you dumbass. <laughs> then he just does the Charleston. <laughs> you think The Rock doesn't know how to do the Charleston? <laughs> oh my god. The Rock doing the Charleston would actually probably be very entertaining. Anyway, but we get to hear him uh, talk he, about he his obsession. He references Shirley Temple on an ice cream sandwich again. It's, again, it, I, no, that's not what he did on on Raw. He said something. He said something about no, that was, what it was. He said it before. It he said it before up. the Rumble in the fucking camera promo. It was that oh, the, the, okay. punky, the punky Brewster on an ice cream sandwich. Does the Rock just really want ice cream sandwiches? The Rock, the Rock wants or a dilly bar. The Rock wants a dilly bar. <laughs> he wants that dipped cone normal. from Dairy Queen. The Rock really just wants to operate an ice cream truck and eat all the ice cream out of the ice cream truck. <laughs> I'm the least efficient ice cream he, truck. He wants to. He was. He was. He wants to be like Homer driving by 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 Lisa in that one episode. Hey, Lisa. That was that was that was it. Now he just did the impression. <laughs> that of that was bit. the that was the whole segment of the Simpsons. <laughs> 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 hey Lisa, and then it just cuts to their house. <laughs> no, she, no, he drives by, not knowing she's in the the, the bus next to him. Goes like, oh, that's raspberry. <laughs> he's it, like, he's stolen the, the the ice cream truck. So we cut to Triple H, who's posing. <laughs> he's just leaning against a wall, like, hello. I hello, think he's ladies. supposed to be angry. Charmel because... asks if he is okay. And then Christian just comes up and says hi. And yeah, Christian's uh, all like, yeah, bitches, it, it, you know what? bitches honestly, be shopping. Bitches honestly be looked, shopping. <laughs> it, it honestly looked like Triple H was waiting outside somebody's door. We didn't know who, and then he was getting ready he was getting ready to talk to someone on the other side. That's what Maybe I it's thought. Tag yeah, he walks up to, Christian walks up to him and just goes, bitches be shopping. And then Triple H beats his ass. <laughs> Oh, he's also being taken to wrestle court for Triple H is being assault. taken to wrestle court. He committed first degree aggravated assault, which is a premeditated assault with the desire to harm. Now, it doesn't <laughs> seem like it was a premeditated assault, but he was waiting there for someone to come up so he could beat them up. That is up to 10 years in prison. <laughs> Triple H. You on the ref sheet. You on the ref sheet. That's not the right. <laughs> God damn it! Hold on. <laughs> You're on the rap sheet. <laughs> you on the rap sheet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, we got what I what I put on my notes is the number one contingency match. No, you're wrong. missing Vince it's, drinking from a cup. I'm <laughs> also missing Vince drinking from a cup. <sighs> WWE has AIDS oh. because of Ric Flair. Anyway, <laughs> we have we have two matches tonight that are specifically a qualifying match for a number one contendership match on Raw, which yeah, sort of I explains the status of what SmackDown is right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the actual match is going to be on Raw, but this are some qualifiers or some shit. Anyway. Yeah, I thought this was just the number one contenders match, and I was confused, but it's like, oh, okay, no, this is a good, this is a qualifier. It's it's a it's a sad state of affairs when my note for this match is this was a match. It was kind of slow. Booker T's wrestling style just doesn't work for a heel. He was really focusing on Stone Cold's legs. It was not that fun. Booker T's more of an explosive kind of worker where he just suddenly jumps into offense and he's you know, he's he's like big and agile and does kicks and can do the spin of Rooney and he just doesn't for the most part or he just he didn't do most of that but there were like glimpses of him acting like a face even though he's a heel and it just didn't work yeah so stone cold or he tries to give stone cold a stunner and stone cold counters into his own stunner and he's going to be in the number one contendership after next week then the audio cuts out <laughs> and we go to commercial break <laughs> Uh, 
So this is where I start to peter out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. Next is the tables match with uh, Kane and the victory. I, I think Ric Flair talks to Charmel also. I petered okay. out a long time ago while we were watching this together because of. Oh yeah, Ric Flair talked to Charmel. Unfortunately, I was dealing with a food coma. He was dealing with food coma. Allie was upset. And I just do, and I was just bored of this show. Anyway, we had a tag team tables match between the Dudley Boys and Kane and Big Show. Do we even know what Ric Flair and Charmel talked about? It? Vince McMahon. Probably Vince McMahon. They, she was probably oh, asking yeah. what Vince McMahon meant by <laughs> everyone loses or something like that. I don't think Vince McMahon drank it from a cup. Woo! I don't think she was. Whatever. There had to be a Vince McMahon related question in there. So this match goes two minutes. They set up a table outside, and then Big Show does the same spot he did on Raw, where he accidentally knocks Kane off the apron, and Kane goes through the table. Yeah, I think we called that actually, where he was like, "Who's taking the 3D, Kane?" He didn't take a 3D, and then no, Big Show took the 3D. Big Show took well. He took like a weird like. I think they no, no, he didn't take the 3D. He did like the. They did the other one. Yeah, the double, um, what's the fucking word I'm looking for? The lifting thing they do. It, the, 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 like the lifting neck breaker? Yeah, they did the neck yeah, breaker. they did a double neck breaker thing. Yeah, to a big show, and it was really cool. I was thinking of what, like, fucking Bubba does for the setup. What that's called, and I kind of, that's drawing a blank on me. No, and like, where he lifts him up, and then the other guy does a running neck breaker? Yeah. Okay, yeah, they did that. I don't, Wait, I don't think it's a running neck breaker, but whatever. It was some. They did some sort of double team move to the big yeah, show. Yeah, it is. It is a lifting. It's like I think it's just a lifting neck breaker, honestly. Right. No, but I'm, was, I'm gonna look. Cool. I'm gonna fucking cool look this up. <laughs> it was cool because you know it's two guys of average builds <laughs> hefting up this 500 pound behemoth. Big dude. Where he's not well, I I don't well the five hundred pound is honestly over overdoing it because he wasn't. Oh, that, okay, that, that not, time. okay. Sorry, I just did some Probably. research. That was the three D two, which is a back suplex neck breaker. Back suplex oh, neck breaker. Okay. okay. Compared to the flapjack, to the flapjack cutter. I think uh, I think that what I was thinking of was I thought they hit like a double flapjack on him. Thank you for reminding me it was a flapjack. Yeah. I don't know why I that was. Know, I didn't know there was a second version of the three D. All right, well, they did it. They did a 3D to the Big Show. But yeah, I guess the gimmick between Big Show and Kane so is that... Despite they, never, the fact they, never that they, it, they never call it the 3D. The, despite the, 3D the fact that only, Kane... They only acknowledge it if it's the, the one that is like the... Yeah, the cutter. The cutter, yeah. So despite the fact that they just formed a tag team, Kane and Big Show are arguing and get into like a, a tussle over the fact that like Big Show accidentally made Kane lose again. Was this where they said, like, third time? Yeah, it was like, for yeah. the third time. And it's like, third time? <laughs> what? They've only been here twice. Do you, we were just here last week. How do you not? How do you guys not not know what the count is in terms of this? Yeah, it's like, they've only tagged twice. Are we counting the elimination of the Royal Rumble? Because that's is, not a tag team thing. This is like, this is like the worst math ever. It's By the like, way, this match like, went... Two minutes. Did you guys go? Did you guys not go Wonderful. to kindergarten? One plus one is three. Amazing. And two plus two is fish. All right. Uh, we got more more Vince McMahon drinking from his cup of whatever mysterious fluid, and talking about cancer. Yeah, I think we also had a match, a non-title match between Tris Stratus and Jazz. That's that's yeah. next. That's coming up after that the Goldberg yeah. promo. And also, uh, I got the results of the test back. The WF definitely has cancer. <laughs> it's shedding blood. I don't remember much about the gold disc promo other than you will never forget the name of Rock Gold Dust. Like, he did the bite and then Gold Dust. He, which he likes very, to mix it up. <laughs> he likes to mix it up, I guess. And this was pretty much, yeah, the same kind of thing. He's saying this is going to be by Brigitte Production, and then he mentions he again. Did I, him. did I know that his, I think I didn't note it, but I remember thinking, like, his, uh, his, like, you know how, like, he's got the 
24 karat productions thing. Yeah. It looked wrong. Like there was more white involved. Like there was white text instead of gold text in certain parts. Well, it of... also the it it changed to widescreen and then it changed aspect ratio suddenly, so it just stretched his face for some reason. <laughs> Wonderful. Good, so yeah, good work again, done. I I don't remember exactly what happens in the non-title match between Tristratus and Jazz. Apparently, there was a DQ. There was a DQ, I think, for just oh yeah, she she didn't break the five count. Yeah. That's and that's really that all you can say. That was the match. So <laughs> if there was a match, I have no. actually no no enjoyable notes for this. This sad. Yeah, that we was get pretty... more events. More events. I, 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 it's one of those. It, this is this was a, I think a problem of having so many Vince segments that all the matches essentially everything got cut short. short. Yep. Yeah. Every like okay. So here are the match links. 42 seconds, 3 minutes, 20 seconds, 5 five minutes, 9 minutes, 2 minutes, 2 minutes, and the final match, which is Kurt Angle versus The Rock, number one contender tournament semifinal match. And Jericho comes out to sit next to the commentary booth and offer his own insightful commentary. He was, he was a riot. How long? The King, okay, and- King kept trying to get over, like... King kept trying to get over like something about a baby. I don't. <laughs> oh yeah, the Brahma baby. The Brahma baby, oh, yeah. and he kept trying to bring it up, and Jericho was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, Brahma baby, yeah." <laughs> and Lawler was like, "The were, Brahma baby, the Brahma baby." <laughs> meanwhile, they were much more natural in just constantly calling Michael Cole Mitchell, which I found hilarious every time. Ah yes, Mitchell Cole. Because <laughs> they were just like, "Yeah, whatever, Mitchell." Oh, oh yeah, Jericho was on commentary this match, and he oh, was great. I forgot about just Jericho saying he was gonna stick his feet in Michael Cole's face or something. I'll stick my yeah, feet in your face. Uh, Jericho was fucking fantastic on commentary. Yeah, like you usually get this problem in modern WB because of how Vince is in everyone's ears. Is you just get really boring like guest commentary, but here like fucking. Jericho or you, or you have fire. someone go on commentary that you should have known before you put them out there. They had no business being on commentary uh, for a match. Yeah. You know, like they, you should have, or at least you should have tested them out before you had them go out there. But yeah, or Jericho's give, come. Go ahead. But yeah, or give them a script if they can't do it well, and maybe even that wouldn't save them. But you know, but Jericho was great. so Jericho kept interfering in the match in subtle ways, like smashing Rock into the announce table when he got too close, and yeah. trying to help out Angle because he was mad at the Rock for talking shit about him. Oh, I uh, wanted to mention quick another thing about having a, someone come out on commentary. There's sometimes that it would do the, another thing when it would do is have someone come out for commentary in a match that would last less than a minute or something like that or yeah, less, yeah, like really short that, really oh, short match know. like to have them come out for commentary for really short matches is like why even bother putting someone out there <laughs> So yeah the rock has to start fighting off Jericho and Angle I think there was like a ref a ref distraction thing as Angle taps out to the sharp, the shitty sharpshooter. Yeah. Uh, and then the Undertaker just comes in and choke slams the rock and Angle pins him. <laughs> yeah, Undertaker, for some reason, is what I put down. I also made a note that Jericho's I belt mean, isn't actually on his pants. I'm guess like, I'm guessing like he the the idea is like, oh, I want to be in the t- title picture, but the problem with that is like. You have this thing with Maven now, don't you? Or are they going to no, no, ignore just, they just that? ignore Maven now. Yeah. Yeah, forget him. He's dead. So, Austin and Angle fight immediately after the match is over. Like, Kurt Angle just seeks out Austin and they just start brawling. Like, yeah, they, I think it's just like one of them is going to be interviewed and then just they start fighting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Angle, I think, was... Was he doing an interview and yelling about the what chance again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is a great... Uh, lo- which I'm glad they brought that back. I'm glad that yeah, didn't get dropped. That's a great little bit. And of Vince, of Pervert Vince he- again, 
turns his chair around in the mirror and he says he's going to kill the WWF and he's going to do it with the Oprah Winfrey Network. Oh, I'm sorry. The One the- Warrior Nation. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's backwards and he's in the mirror, so it's O W N on his chair, and it says N W O in the mirror, but that's not <laughs> the Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> that's not happening with the one who wore your nation. Yes, he's gonna inject it. He's gonna snort ah, N W O <laughs> with a lethal dose of poison. <laughs> Ah, nipples. I'm gonna kill what I created. Ah, nipples. Ah. Ah. And, uh, hey, Allie, since you have the stats, I wanted to know if the stats actually show how long each of these segments were and no. how long it was overall. No. Nope. Uh, Doesn't have that. Nope. No. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be impressed, but no, I don't think anyone's gonna time Vince McMahon promos. But so... I was just... Yeah, so this is like it. It really did feel like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's Vince on a coke. Event. This is like essentially Vince snorting cocaine before tonight. Is like, ah, I gotta be on the show for like thirty minutes tonight. Ah. So that was SmackDown. Let's head into awards. Um, what is our uh, volunteers count? 13? Our Lawler first count was 13. I announced that at the start of the show. Yes. Because we were also talking about last week's Lawler first count. Uh, our MVP Which show was, won? Or, which show won? Yeah. I don't think we're doing that yet. No. And if, which and if which being show honest, was better? <laughs> and if I'm being honest, I, do, I feel like both lost. <laughs> Best show. Fuck you. Okay. Like... <laughs> I don't remember if we actually were doing that for other awards. I usually just stuck to the MVPs and the underrateds. Well, I always... I, I kept trying to, like, goad you into talking about Best Show. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, in genuine... Who, who is our MVP? Our MVP was Chris Jericho. Yep. I, like, that I'm commentary gonna... really helped, like, sink it for me. Yeah, Jericho was great on commentary. I so want to give underrated to Taz, though. <laughs> Yeah, I can he did very good, despite the fact he's injury. He's just full of injuries. His neck is full of gremlins. Yes. Our Y segment of the week, at least for me and Ellie, is Coachman doing the Charleston. See, I can actually see why they did that, because the whole point was to make fun, it's, it's fun of Charleston. We don't need to know why. We're asking why was it on the show. Why, why do this? Because it's... Because... Make fun of Coach. That's oh, he's why. A, he's a girly man. Uh, uh, and yes, and just because you're in Nashville... As for, as for why was it on the you show... You have to pretend you're Elvis. My, my, my answer is why was Val Venus fighting Mr. Perfect? That fair point, I guess. Towels. Because kind of, Towel. it just seemed like a Towel. randomly thrown together match. And I mean, like, I'm, I'm fine with the whole... Okay, yeah, we... I know why they had just make Joe a Cole come out and beat him in the, and do the promo. At least I understand that part. In but, a towels match. But you... why have but why have the match then between a random match between him and Mr. Perfect? Like you could have just had the beat. It, it, well, I mean, so... they wanted to show that Mr. Perfect was back. I guess he, you know. I guess, yeah. Was that all our awards? Sign of the night was um, Will Wrestle uh, Nude for food, right? I will wrestle nude yeah. for food, yes. But friend of Robert Kishi dumped at my house. I think we're done for the most part. Yeah, this was a this was a weak week. Haha, ah. <laughs> he did a joke. Anyway, it's I would still like to better th- than the modern WWE though. <laughs> I would like to thank the 16 or so people who have listened to this podcast so far. There are no advertisements yet because we are all broke bitches. Yes, we would like to thank our sponsors. No one. <laughs> I would like to thank my sponsors. <laughs> Just nothing. <laughs> but if you like the show and you want to share it among your friends or support us over on Anchor FM, we are on Anchor YouTube, Spotify, 
Radio Public, Podcast Cast, Overcast, Google Podcasts, and Breaker. We're not on iTunes actually. I have to manually oh, upload. Oh. I have to manually upload it, and I'm lazy. So yeah. So fuck you, iTunes. <laughs> Until you pay us, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, pay, Apple. Fuck, fuck you, pay us. <laughs> fuck you, give us apples, Apple. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be paid in apples. What kind of apples? Yeah, red, reds are usually nice. I like Honeycrisp. Harrelsons. Looks like Don't we're gonna have head. to fight over there. <laughs> our next, uh, our next segment of fight me. No. Apples, <laughs> apples. We'll bring in Carlito for that episode. But yes, thank you for listening to Rassle Boys, and like we always say at the end of the episode, end of the episode phrase.